All right, so with this video, we're gonna do something a little bit different. We are going to extend the existing Bitnami Spark Docker image that we've been using to add support for Apache Livy as well. And what this is gonna do is allow us to interact with our Spark cluster over a REST interface. So what we're gonna be able to do is submit Spark jobs using GET and POST requests using the Python requests library which we'll do in subsequent videos. For now, we'll focus on creating the image and spinning it up as part of our Docker Compose service, which also includes the Spark Master and Spark Worker. And to recap, this is a third video in the series on building out an Apache Spark workstation on Docker. In the first video, we executed a sample PySpark job. In the second video, we executed a Scala job and then in this third video, we're actually gonna pause and work on building out a new Docker image itself. So I've got an empty Docker file here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to extend the existing Spark 2 Bitnami image and add some more features to it. And this is one of the reasons why I really like the Bitnami Spark project. Uh, it's got a lot of documentation for how you can actually extend their images to add in new jars or different version of jars. For example, here they're installing an AWS Java SDK bundle by extending this image. And here they're using Bitnami Spark. So we're actually going to do something really similar. You can see here that they're switching to the root user in order to access some of the privileged directories. So we're actually gonna do something really similar. Let's switch back to our Docker file. Let's copy the image name here and we'll go ahead and do from, pass the image name here. We'll do user root, just like the head of the example. And then we're gonna run, uh, we're actually gonna install unzip and that should be it. That's all we need for now to experiment. So I'm gonna switch over to the shell for this next section. We've got our Docker file here, and we're gonna go ahead and create a test image off of it. Let's do docker build dash T for tag, and we're gonna call it Livy test. And then the build context is gonna be the current working directory. All right, so now we can confirm the image is built with Docker images. And here's the image we've been using in the past two videos, and here's the new one that we created now. So what I'm going to do next is go to livy.incubator.apache.org, then go to get started. Then in the first step, we have a link to download Livy packages. We can go to the zip archive and then copy this URL. Now I've got the image downloaded and I'm actually going to go ahead and start a container based on this image. So we're going to copy the image name. We're going to do docker run it for interactive. And we're actually going to go ahead and open port 8998, which is the default port for Livy. Pass the image name and then enter the container with bash. All right. So you can see here that we are in Spark Home. And what we're going to do is back up one directory and we're going to create a new directory called Livy for Livy Home. But first, let's install the package. So I'm going to take the URL I copied earlier. I'm going to run curl and paste in the URL that I copied earlier and add the dash O flag, which will ensure that the zip file will be named according to the remote file name. Wait for this to download. Now that it's downloaded, we can unzip it. And then we can actually rename the new directory to just Livy, make it cleaner. And then we can delete the original .zip package. So now we've got two directories. We've already had our Spark Home, and now we have a Livy Home as well. So let's go ahead and run it. We can run Livy by running the 
Libby server shell script in the bin directory. And it's probably going to error out with cannot write log directory to opt bitnami Libby logs. That's not a problem. Let's go ahead and create this directory. And then let's run it again. All right, so we've got our Libby server running. Then if we move over to our browser and we go to local host 8998, we've got the Libby UI up and running here. All right, so what I've done now is I've taken all of those commands I just ran inside of the container and I've moved them over here into this run statement of the Docker file. And you can see that I'm not just installing and downloading the package, but also creating the log directory and changing ownership from the root user to our non root user with a UID of 1001. Now I'm going to go ahead and build the image just to make sure it works. We'll call it Levy test again. And in the meantime, there are a few changes that I'm going to have to make to my Docker compose file in order to spin up this container as part of our Spark service. So let's go ahead and copy the Spark worker configuration and we'll just add it to the bottom here. We can remove the environment. This won't be needed anymore. We'll rename Spark worker to Spark Livy. And instead of an image, we're actually going to set a build context, which will be equal to the current working directory. We'll change the port to 8998, which is the default port for the Livy web server. And we'll add an additional depends on clause to have it wait for both the Spark master and the Spark worker to spin up before running. Now I'm going to keep the log configuration the same, but I am going to add a second volume. And this is going to include the entire conf directory. Which we're going to map to the conf directory inside Livy home. And just to review Livy home will be opt bitnami Livy right next to the spark directory. And the reason I want to set this comp is because I do want to set some preliminary environment variables inside the Livy container, namely spark home, which will be opt bitnami spark. Lastly, I need to pass the command that the container will start with. This will be sh dash C and then the path to the Libby server. We'll fix the typo here. And then we should be able to run Docker compose up dash D. It's going to go ahead and recreate all three containers. We've got Spark Master, Spark Worker, and Spark Livy. Let's make sure they're running. All right, now let's check the UI. Spark is up on localhost 8080. And then Livy is up on localhost 8998. All right, so now that we're up and running, let's go ahead and run some curl commands against our Spark Livy cluster. As I mentioned before, Livy exposes a REST interface to our Apache Spark cluster, which allows us to run post and get requests. So let's start with a post request to create a session, which we'll use to then execute our code. This will be a high spark session 
which will pass as the value to the kind argument. So let's go ahead and run that. Then let's check the UI. Refresh. And here we've got a session running. It's a PySpark session with a session ID of zero. And if we check the Spark UI, you should see a Livy session running as well. Now let's send some code to be executed using that session. We'll start with a simple for loop. It will iterate over the values in the range one through 10 and print each value. Notice here that I'm passing PySpark as the argument to kind and a string with the code as the value to the code param. And it looks like session one is not found and that's because it is actually session zero. So let's go ahead and fix that here. All right, let's check the UI. We'll go ahead and click on the zero session ID and we can see the code that we executed here and we can see the output as well. Let's try one more command. This time I'm gonna make sure that we have access to the Spark context. So for the code, we're gonna access spark.spark context and print out the application ID. And again, we have to change session one to session zero. Let's check the UI. All right, and we've got our Spark application ID executed here. And let's check that out in the Spark UI. Let's refresh. And you can see that it matches the application that's running here. All right, let's recap what we did in this video. We've taken our original Docker Bitnami Spark 2 image, and we've created a new Docker file extending this image to download and install Apache Levy. Then we've added a third container to our Docker Compose application to run the Levy web server. Finally, we executed some post requests on the Livy server to print out some simple Python code and the Spark context application ID. In the next video, we're gonna do a deeper dive into Livy sessions using Python requests, and then subsequently explore Livy batches using Scala.